Stranger Things season 4 is finally here, and I'm pretty sure the true fans have already done justice to the first half of the season. Although the episodes were lengthy, they did introduce and reintroduce us to a lot of new and old characters. We also went on adventures we never knew existed and took a deep look at Hawkins' sad history and the mythology around the Upside Down. But despite all of that, the first half finale did end with a big reveal and an epic cliffhanger. I'm sure no one expected. So, after the epic finish of the first part of Stranger Things Season 4, here are some questions we need answers to in the second part. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you truly want to support the channel. I'll also like to warn you of the massive spoilers ahead, so try to tread carefully. With that said, let's get started. The main villain of Stranger Things as we know them is the Mind Flayer, a giant monster that rules over the Upside Down. It has possessive abilities we saw in Season 2 and in Season 3 we either saw it or one of its minions. The point I'm trying to make is that this big bad has already been established as a final boss of the series, but season 4 might have changed that stereotype with his new face. Meet Vecna, a Freddy Kruegerish character with multiple kills under his name already. While there was some hypotheses that Venka could be the Mind Flayer's number one henchman, we can't help but wonder how significant this character is to the story. Regardless of how you look at it, Venka's evil nature has has forced us to question the Mind Flayer's relevance in the franchise currently. This is perhaps one of the main questions we have to ask ourselves after we learn about the time in the Upside Down. After the crew figures out that the time in the Upside Down was frozen, they soon realize that it stopped way back in 1983, on a day that Will Byers was abducted by the Demogorgon and taken into the Upside Down. At this point, no one really knows what any of that means yet or if it could have massive implications later on, but the topic needs to be addressed. We also find ourselves asking probably the biggest interpersonal question of the season. Throughout the entire series, it has been implied that Will was gay or at least coded as LGBTQ+. In the first season, Joyce highlights that other children pick on him because they think he is gay. Then, in subsequent seasons, Mike also makes a remark on that thought when he told Will, it's not my fault you don't like girls. You can swap spit with some stupid girl. Elle's not stupid. It's not my fault you don't like girls. While there's seemingly a lot of reasons to believe that Will is gay, we still don't have a clear answer to this question. But considering how confident Will has gotten over the years, perhaps he might finally come out of the closet in this next part. For now, only time will tell. We should perhaps put more emphasis on the word alive, considering what one is right now. But since one, aka Vecna, is Brenner's first test subject, that could mean he knows Vecna is one. Could that be the reason he skipped ahead in Eleven's therapy? To force a showdown between her and her former mentor, we can't really be sure with Brenner. Seriously speaking, we need answers to this question. I mean, he started off as a despicable character who abused Eleven both physically and mentally. Now we're supposed to believe that he's some kind of good guy? It's hard to root or feel sympathy for Brenner, especially after all the things he's done. But what is his ultimate goal here? I guess that remains to be seen. At the very end of Episode 7, we saw flashes of Joyce Hopper and Murray getting out of a Russian prison complex where Hopper was held. While this was happening, we caught a glimpse of what looked like a taxidermied demogorgons in another section of the prison. Although these glimpses don't explain what the Russians are doing with a demogorgon or how they got it to Russia, it does tell us that Russians are up to something. So perhaps we'll get more insight on that in part two. Yet another character-based question we're dying to find out. We all know that Nancy still has feelings for Steve. I mean, just look at the way she watched him undress while he heads out to the lake. Their shared attraction is so strong that other characters even made notes about it. We can without a doubt say their love is inevitable, so it's a high time they accept it and get together already. So let's hope the final part of season 4 gives us that long-awaited romance. Although the ominous grandfather clock was a dormant relic from the Creel house, it has now become a key visual hallmark, or totem if you will, in Stranger Things 
four. Right now, it symbolizes Vecna's presence, and any character that sees the clock will likely die in the most grotesque way possible. While this is a spooky addition to Vecna's lore, it does attach a lot of questions to the clock in general. Like, why is the clock Vecna's symbol? Is there a hidden meaning behind its appearance, or is it the key to defeating Vecna? The clock is ticking, so we need answers fast. The whole concept was a great addition to Vecna's lore. You see, later on in Stranger Things 4, it was relevant that whenever Vecna kills someone, he rips a hole in time and space. So essentially, every murder site is a gateway to the Upside Down. That means Hawkins has a lot of mini gates to the Upside Down, especially the water gate in the lake. But why exactly is Vecna opening these gates? It could be a planned invasion, but either way, these gates can only mean bad news for Earth. So hopefully, we see what that is all about. This question remains unclear because whatever reason Brenner had for keeping one employed at Hawkins National Lab clearly backfired. Brenner was a lot of things, but he wasn't stupid. He should have known that having one around the facility and around all those gifted children wasn't a good idea. Perhaps he thought that having one around him meant he had a higher chance of controlling him. Spoiler, it didn't, and the result was an out-of-control experiment currently on a <laughs> Monster Kill! So, in a way, we can heavily blame one's current form on Brenner's poor decision making, but let's see how it goes. Towards the ending of episode 7, Joyce Murray and Hopper try to escape a Russian prison complex after freeing Hopper, but obviously that won't be an easy task. So, who out of the three will most likely make it out of Russia, or will they all escape? We know that Murray will make it out at the very least because Brett mentioned him in season 5, but will he be the only one? We'll see how things go in part two. At the end of episode six to dive, Steve enters the Upside Down through Watergate on the arrival. He is attacked by several demo bats and bitten pretty badly. Even though Nancy and Robin came just in time to save him, the damage was already done. In the end, he is left with several wounds that look more upside downy than normal. So perhaps he's infected with some kind of upside down world venom. Well, that seems likely only time will tell, so let's wait until July 1st and see what Volume 2 has installed for us. There you have it. Hopefully, we get answers to these questions in the second part of Season 4. But did we leave it a question that you had in mind, or do you think you have answers to some of these questions? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below, leave a thumbs up in the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it that much. I'll have more content coming your way very soon, but for now, stay safe, drink water, and have a good day. Bye.